so these people are super mad because all they know is doctrines of men. They don't hear the voice of God. They don't talk to God. They don't even try. They think enough is just knowing doctrines. And that's just not the case. That will get you killed. Good to know theology. It's good. But at the end of the day, if you're not speaking with the Father and asking Him for understanding and that kind of thing, then you might as well just not even be a believer because this was an issue with the Pharisees. They were always learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. And so they just were devoid of spirit. So I'm in this group and uh, they thought it was funny to post something about the Messiah being black. And so I gave them all this documentation supporting that the Messiah was black. And so, you know, it's crazy how the racism seems to come out when you say such things, even if you have documentation. Because what these people try to do is they'll tell you to provide all the documents, and then you do, and then they deny them, and then they start coming with emotional arguments and that kind of thing. Uh, why? Because that's just what they do. It's in their blood. It's something that has to be sanctified out of their blood in order for them to be pure. But because they're so knee-deep in doctrines of men and just commandments of men, these kinds of things don't really go away. They get used to being right, um, and so they will come up with every excuse to be right, even if opposing evidence uh, indicates that they're wrong. And even when they're wrong, and they start to realize it, it becomes about you. There's no integrity with a lot of people because they're not really seeking after the heart of God. That's why he talks about in the Bible how you be honest with your opponent, or you know they'll prove you wrong, and then you'll prove yourself to be a fool. But since so many people don't really listen to anything in the Old Testament, they were probably disregarded, even if the evidence is presented right in front of them, because it's the same mind that does these kinds of things. And so I presented all this evidence concerning the look of the Sephardic Jews, like lots of evidence. There was at least like 10 things in there, um, you know, documentation. These documents very clearly state that the Portuguese Jews were black. Very clearly, these documents are from European geographers, so we're not even talking about black resources, which they will deny any resource that does not fit their liking. In their room, apparently, um, if you are not like them, then all the research that you do has no relevance. And so I had to tell them this because I was posting resources from Arabs. Arabs that were there during the time of Christ. Arabs that were there in Jerusalem. Arabs that saw the way that these people looked. Their documentation tells us that these people were Udma, which means black with red undertones, or black with yellow undertones, and sometimes to the darkest deep brown. They called Moses a deep black. They said he looked like a man from the tribe of Shanua, or Zut. These people were very dark skinned with woolly hair. And woolly hair can mean a variety of things. It doesn't mean necessarily the kinkiest of black hair. It can be a looser curl pattern. But it's not going to be a super loose curl pattern. That's just what it is. And so these people are so racist. They want to do things like deny the resources that were there of these Arabs <laughs> because, oh, well, we can't take that because Mohammed. And I'm like, what does Mohammed have to do with it? They were there, you were not there, but they'll take a resource from a quote unquote Gentile biblical scholar. They'll take that resource. Because some guy said that the Jews were olive. The Jews in Jerusalem are olive. Well, duh. Look at their DNA. You'll see why they're olive. They come from the Turks, 
and they come from the Iranians. That's the DNA that they lend themselves back to. They are called Ashkenazi because Ashkenaz was the grandson of Japheth, not even Shem. So, they're a mix of Esau and Japheth. That's why they're olive skin. So, he said, one of the dudes said three times, oh, the people in the Middle East, after I presented all this evidence concerning their DNA, where they come from, and the skin color concerning these people. Three times I told this person. Three times. Then they started making, I refuse to believe that the Messiah came from Africa. And I'm like, first off, the Middle East was a part of Africa. It was not called the Middle East. It was Africa. Second off, it's not Africa. There are tribes. There's many tribes in Africa, including the Shemites. So his understanding of history and peoples doesn't even make sense. Because it's not about the understanding of peoples in history. It's about their racism coming through. So I was looking at my true ancestry, and there's a new one on there where you can see exactly where you should visit concerning your heritage. What it puts on mine is a place called Saifa. Not even in Africa. Not in Spain. <laughs> not in Portugal. Lebanon. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Canaanites, well, many scholars believe that they went to Lebanon. However, mine has parentheses, Israel. So, putting this on there, Facebook decides it wants to block that. <laughs> it was just so crazy. Facebook decides it wants to block that. And pretty much nothing else I said. So, and it blocked something else too. I think I had said something about the Catholics. I don't know. But it blocked two things. And so this must be a, a real serious thing happening now since they're finding ways to block the truth. Even about your own DNA. So, I'm going to try to repost it, of course. And see what happens. But, these people want you to prove, want you to prove what your DNA is. And then when you prove it with all the resources, they want to deny everything. That's because they're not the children of God. The children of God, they're going to try harder to walk in honesty. These people don't. They're Gentiles. That's why they need to be taught by Jews, like true Jews, not the ones that are calling themselves Jews. But the time of the Gentiles is almost up. And uh, I had to let them know that. Your time is almost up. You've been ruling the church system with your fake laws, your fake documents, your fake rules of man. None of you guys are getting any kind of rest or any kind of healing. All you're doing is saying Jesus' name 20 times, hoping that something magical happens. So your time is up. That's why the Gentiles died in the desert. They didn't really want to follow the laws, the statutes, and the commandments of the Most High. And they still don't. And that's why they always speak against them. And they try to argue about it. You throw out 20,000 scriptures to them, they don't listen. They don't have his mind. The prophecies were passed down to the Jews. The understanding is passed down through the Jews. It's in our DNA, literally. It's programmed in there because of our ancestors doing what he says. When you're obedient to his laws, his statutes, and his commandments, he will reprogram your DNA to the original DNA that it was. So, even with all the slavery and all the things that happened to us, at the end of the day, that is still in our DNA, his truth. They don't have his DNA. They don't have uh, the same thing that we have, so they can't understand it. And so... Because of that, they're just going to be removed. There's nothing that I can do about it. You can say that it's mean or whatever the deal is, but it is what it is. So, take a look, guys. If you did your Ancestry DNA, upload it to my true Ancestry. You might have to pay around $150 to get to the place that I am. But, you know, it might be beneficial for you to know. So, you guys be blessed and have a good one. Bye.